Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers, it's Kush back at again with another New York Giants video. Before we get into it tonight, I will be doing the call-in stream a day earlier than usual, um, j just to get y'all thoughts on everything that's been going on. It's been a little bit of, you know, rumors slash speculation going on, obviously, like I spoke about earlier. Um, a really exciting hire, in my opinion, I'm going to talk about in this video, and just to gauge what y'all think and for anybody to come on and talk and have a debate you guys know how it is with the call-in stream 8 30 tonight but the giants are making some moves with their front office personnel one of them uh is the hiring of a guy named brandon brown he was with the philadelphia eagles uh for the past i want to say four or three years he was their director of player personnel and we are hiring him as our assistant general manager i'm gonna get into that of course, and the Giants did not retain their current co-director of player personnel, Mark Conks. He was sort of Dave Gellman's right-hand man coming over from Carolina. This is per Jordan Renan. I'm going to pop up the tweet for you guys, obviously. And the fact that we are making these changes is a good sign. I've, I've said it so many times and so have many of the Giants fans, you know, right before we actually started to clean house, both on the coaching staff side and the front office side, that something needs to be looked at when it comes to our scouting department one and you know whoever's overlooking player personnel in general and it seemed those changes are going to be made now i don't know if the scouting department ones are necessarily going to be made this season because they've already done all the work in terms of looking at the current prospects for the 2022 nfl draft and you're gonna have to just use the work that they've that you know that they looked at because you're not about to go and break down every single prospect um the way that these guys did for over the past six or seven months or however long that process is you're gonna have to sort of you know just use the information they give you uh and work your best with it and i think maybe next year you know we'll probably see some actual turnover in that realm of things i could be wrong but uh just just going off of how you know cleaning of houses or you know going off of how new regimes usually work they tend to keep those guys just because, once again, they've already done the work and you're not about to do all that work again in a, what, three-month span uh, until the NFL draft gets here. And that's not counting stuff that just happened, like the Senior Bowl and things that are coming up, like the draft combine and whatnot, you know, pro days, all of that. Um, So glad to see director player personnel, you know, changes are being made there. Of course, if he was, as Renan says, a gentleman's right-hand man absolutely no reason to keep him and then now let's talk about brandon brown the guy that i am really really excited about and the reason i am excited about him is because when i saw his name the first thing and i saw what organization he came from the eagles the first thing that came into my mind was offensive line now as giants fans i know we all hate the philadelphia eagles you know what i'm saying it's, it's part of that contract you signed to be as a giants fan you gotta hate the eagles you gotta hate the cowboys you don't necessarily got to hate the uh, the Washington football team or the commanders, they're not called, but you know, they're just kind of there. But Eagles and Cowboys are enemy number one, right? Public enemy number one. But one thing you cannot deny, and the Eagles fans that do watch my channel, I appreciate y'all, that, you know, whenever they are into calling streams or any of my streams, they always, always, always talk about their offensive line and how they built that thing first. You know, going back to their 2017 Super Bowl run, and even now, they have a very, very strong offensive line, a defensive line as well. So as soon as we got a guy that was in charge of the player personnel over there, I knew he had to have something to do with building that offensive line. And he he is now our assistant GM. But he, by the way, also interviewed for the general manager position in Minnesota. Of course, I believe it went to uh, Kwesi Adolfo Mensa. He didn't get it, but this guy was being looked at for an even bigger position that he is with currently. Um, But keep that in mind, the offensive line thing, right? Because we are trying to obviously get ours right. We are entering a draft where there are three really great tackles to pick from. A lot of good inside offensive linemen, in my opinion, from the first all the way to the third and sometimes even fourth round. You could really turn this thing around and get it to a respectable line in just one offseason. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's see what uh, Joe Shane had to say about it. After all, he is now going to be Joe Shane's right-hand man. This is from Giants.com. It says Brandon has a strong reputation around the league as a leader, evaluator, and consensus builder. He is a tireless worker who has experience in pro personnel and college scouting. He has a progressive approach to the evaluation process. Brandon will help lead player personnel department, 
the player personnel department as well as assist across the entire football operation one thing i want to go back and highlight is the progressive approach to the evaluation process we know that joe shane himself has a progressive approach to the evaluation process these guys actually know how to use analytics not in the bad way analytics have sort of become a buzz term in the nfl the bills joe shane and brandon bean those are guys who know how to use it well all right just look at the way they built their team and we know that uh, Shane has his, had his own analytics guy that he sort of like carried with him from team to team. He went to the Dolphins to the Bills. I'm, I don't know. I didn't see anything about him coming over to the Giants. But he's now getting a guy in uh, Brandon Brown that also has a good background with that. And knows how to integrate it well into football. And I'll say this. The Eagles have sort of been ahead of that curve as well at least in their front office for the past couple of years. Now, I know, you know, we all clown on them. They don't draft their linebackers. And, you know, their wide receiver picks are hit and miss. But the most important thing here for me, the O-line cannot stress enough. I really cannot stress enough how much they have been good with building that offensive line. Brown, 33, spent the previous five seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles. He was pro promoted to the team's director of player personnel in 2021. In that role, he oversaw the Eagles pro scouting department and they crossover work on the college scouting staff with co-director of player personnel, uh, Ian Cunningham. Brown joined the Eagles in 2017. He was first his first of two years as the assistant of director of pro personnel scouting. In 2019, he was promoted to director of pro scouting, a position he also held for two seasons. Prior to his tenure with the Eagles, he spent two seasons with the Colts as an advanced scout in 2016 and scouting assistant in 2015. And he joined the Colts after spending two years at Boston College, first as a recruiting specialist in 2013, then as an assistant director of player, player personnel in 2014. Basically, and it continues to go on even more and more down, he's worked his way up throughout scouting. He's worked his way up through the draft, which the best part of the GM, in my opinion, or, you know, the GM, the one part he should know better than the other is draft over free agency, in my opinion. We all know Joe Shane's stance on that. He wants to keep his own players we, we know how it goes, all right? So this is just a good move in that direction as well. And getting back to the Eagles O-line, I'm sure you guys know about a guy named Jordan Mailata. It's a guy that Eagles fans love to brag about, brag about and with good reason. Absolute monster human being that never played football before until he got um, to the Philadelphia Eagles, I believe, or until about a year before he got with the Eagles. Just a big dude, right? Big, raw, physical talent was the name of the game for Jordan Mailata. The Eagles took him with the seventh round pick, and he is now their franchise left tackle. A franchise left tackle from a former rugby player that had nothing going for him but his size, and the Eagles said, let's take a chance on him. We could work with him. We could develop him. We see the potential. Do you guys know who is the guy pushing for the Eagles to take Jordan Mailata with that seventh round pick? Who said, hey, yo, listen, uh, Howie Roseman, you're not going to lose much if he doesn't pan out. It's just a seventh round pick. The man that did that is Brandon Brown. I got right here from the LibertyLine.com. He said it says Brown was previously part of the Philadelphia Scotland Department from 2017 through 2020 and was promoted this past offseason. He's best known for being the scout who pushed them to draft Jordan Mailata in 2018. I got a lot of faith, and maybe I'm putting too much faith in our front office right now but i have faith that they're gonna try and make the right decision when it comes to this offensive line especially when it comes to drafting with, with the offensive line i'm so very excited because i've you know i'm actually about halfway done with making my mock draft 1.0 and you guys know i'm a big offensive line guy so it's i guess it's no spoiler that yes i am going to be taking at least one offensive line alignment in this draft and just that combined with the fact that we now got a guy that found an absolute diamond in a rough, a gem in my lotta. I'm just so excited to see with that, you know, combined with Sean, um, Shane, I keep saying Sean, you know, combined with Dable, what they could do with the Giants offensive line this coming season. And of course, the off season that we're in right now. Well, guys, that's it for now. Put your thoughts down below. Like the video, share it out, subscribe, and I'll see you all tonight at 830. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.